Hi, good morning, Caitlin. How are you doing? Morning, Caitlin. Have you? Have you um, it, it appears that um, you've sorted out your um, initial problems with um, finding the links, the correct links for the session. Um, um, is that correct? You all sorted now? Yes, sir, I'm sorted. Good. How's the weather down in Georgia this morning? It was really raining. <laughs> um, Oh, that, uh, yeah, the cold and the wet we got yesterday. You you have now. Yeah. Our our house flooded. Oh my word! That much rain. Yeah. Everything. Are you guys alright? Everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. The the insurance will pay out. Oh, I just that. that's that's why uh, the registration number for George is CAW, eh? Cold and wet. We know yeah, that. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> Oh, well, all the best. I hope everything works out. But uh, geez, yeah, this is not something that you want to experience ever, but uh, I suppose it happens. Um, and yeah, nature is nature and always will bring a surprise when we least expect it. But um, okay. think about you. Good luck there. Um, everybody else, welcome, uh, Theresa. Um, and I think, um, let me see, somebody else has joined as well. Um, where are we now? I'm actually trying to. Um, I think with with Latsu is also here. Yeah, I just want to tick off. I'm taking attendance as we as we progress, and I'm pretty sure that one or two students more will join if they don't. That's just the bad luck. Um, I have picked up um, on the, during the um, between periods since the first period this morning. Um, uh, that uh, I wanted to upload the, re the recording for the early morning session already. Uh, because I had an off period and um, then I saw that the video clip that was shown in the previous recording and actually did not display in the in um, wasn't displayed in the recording. In other words, am I correct? Um, Theresa, you attended the first session. You, you couldn't see that um, that video about the handshakes. Yes, sir. Also the one with uh, Patch Adams. OK, they don't, so, they don't show. OK, so that's that. And actually, I've made a note here. I'm going to upload that. Um, uh, onto each week session as well. All those video clips, um, in, uh, like like we do with your classes and the recordings, because apparently there's something wrong. Because um, the students on campus here, yeah, uh, as well as me on the screen, can actually see and hear it clearly. So somewhere there's some technicality that I'll sort out and find people who know more than I do about these things to help me fix. Um, but for the meantime, I'll um, additional videos like that that we use in a in a particular presentation, I will upload this afternoon or early evening, but definitely sometime today. Um, so at least that um, you can watch it and you can relate to it because it's um, I, I will not um, add five million videos to watch because I'm, I'm, I know you guys are, are surfing and watching videos regularly on YouTube, but um, obviously it needs to be related to the specific um, uh, context of of a, um, a chapter or um, that we're busy with, um, and therefore I'll upload it on each of those pages on on Canvas. Um, for those who um, have not been able to attend um, the earlier session this morning, we continued with chapter um, three um, that deals with communication and. Uh, we specifically focused on or continue to to work with nonverbal communication. Um, we dealt with the handshakes um, and the dress code and stuff like that, which is which is very important in any form of communication. Dress and how you dress and how what jewelry you wear and stuff like that is is, is important because it, um, it 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 creates a first impression. Um, obviously, the handshake as well um, and as an introduction and um, to try and and establish a um, um, uh, trustworthy relationship with your um, with your customers. Um, we will continue in today uh, in the second session today with um, further nonverbal communication and specifically written communication. Um, very often in any transaction, and I mean, and this is not obviously when when um, um, this, this refers to a personal selling situations where. 
um, a salesperson will have a name, a list of names on a database that he or she phones to try and make an appointment um, and establish if there's an interest in the products that, um, that, that they are trying to sell. It's not the case when you're going to the shop to buy bread, you're not going to go into any negotiations, um, you're just going to pay and leave. Um, we're talking here about products that um, obviously um, is slightly more expensive, like vehicles and houses and stuff like that. Um, so very often in these cases and with these transactions, um, um, some form of written um, documentation is required in the form of a contract between the two parties to ensure that um, that um, ensure something goes wrong and that there's no misunderstanding as to what the content of the agreement is between the two parties. Um, very often, it's also when businesses are selling to each other. You've got a salesperson representing, for instance, um, Canon or a Nashua copiers, and they are phoning businesses who are going to be interested in um, a multi-fax uh, um, printer copier that they can use in their business environment to conduct their business. So you're not going to just buy one off the shelf and put it in the car and, and go home and use it or go to your office and use it. Yeah, we are talking about um, a, a process that very often um, requires some kind of written um, confirmation of what has been discussed. Um, written communication is very important. Um, to remember the golden rule of written communication is that whatever form you use, and we'll look at a couple different forms of uh, written communication just now that we are all most familiar with, is that you have to remember that whatever um, documentation you are, that you are representing the organization that you work for, that you employed, you as a salesperson are employed with a particular organization that you are representing as a sales individual or sales consultant, um, and that um, that is done in that professional manner as well. Um, company letterhead, for instance, um, email um, signature that re um, that reflects that you are representing a particular company. Um, it's it's not you chatting to um, sending a letter to your grandmother or texting somebody or um, or, um, or writing an email um, in, in, in a personal capacity. To remember also is there are certain regulations um, that you have to abide by. Um, it's set by the organization that you represent. Um, you also have to make sure that the customer will not see this um, um, communication as junk mail. Um, and it has to be to the point. You are not chatting um, to somebody that you haven't seen for many years. Um, so it's to the point. Um, what are you offering? Um, where can they get it? And, and what's the next step? Um, in other words, also almost a form of a, a, an attempt to um, to to um, secure an appointment um, so you can do a proper presentation. Um, you're always trying to sell the appointment, not um, the product. Um, if it's possible, any kind of communication like this, follow up the communication and um, follow up with the customer to see if they actually received it. Um, very often now, um, it, there, there are certain tools available um, on certain software packages that um, uh, automatically um, 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 provide you the, the choice of replying um, that you have received it. Um, if it's text that's sent, um, there's, you, you find very often that they ask you to uh, opt out by saying no or replying no to it if you don't want more information, whatever. Um, or if you're interested, yes, and then obviously someone will follow you up. So um, just make sure that um, that that you always follow up with a potential customer to see if they've received the information that you send. Sales letters is a form of um, of, of written communication. Um, make sure that when you construct the letter itself, and there's an example in your textbooks, and I've got one on the screen as well. Um, but make sure that the content is to the point and um, and, and informative, um, but also hi Luandu, welcome. And then also that you um, that is written in such a manner that the individual that is addressed to um, feels like it's written for them personally. Uh, it's not a generic um, letter that goes out um, and you can actually see that it was just copy and pasting. Make it uh, as personal as possible, uh, personal in in the sense of um, of 
addressing the specific um, um, the potential customer specifically. Um, you have um, a range of products that you, a new range of products that, that, um, that you're offering. Often sales letters go out to, um, offer sales letters go out to existing customers um, that you say, all right, we've got new products that we're launching next month or the specials for next month or the following, and they're listed in there. Um, if you're interested, um, if you're interested, maybe attach a um, um, sort of an order form um, and um, it's it's a it's a formal way of of of, of um, concluding um, um, a, a sales transaction. Then we also have obviously what we all are familiar with. Oh, whoopsie! I think we no, we haven't skipped one. I thought we skipped one. Postcards. Um, postcards is not the postcards that you that you that we've traditionally become used to. It's not a picture of Table Mountain. Um, you buy it because you're visiting Cape Town and you want to send it to your family in the UK and you write a small little message on the back and then put a stamp on it and off it goes and they probably get it by the time that you are back home already. Uh, that's the way in which a lot of um, travelers communicate this. Um, when they're vacating or when they travel um, the club um, to, to stay in touch with their loved ones. But the postcards I'm specifically referring to is the postcard that um, is used by businesses where, and you often find it in your mailbox where um, it's, it's, it's in the shape of a postcard. It provides you with some information, but it's also pre-addressed already. So if you just tick your boxes and fill your own detail on, you can just throw it back into the, into the post box and um, it, it will already, it will go back to the company because it's already have the company's return address on it. Um, it's used very effectively because just an absolute minimum um, but essential information um, is provided. It's got the post the postcard and shape, which is pretty much um, I think I'm a, I always struggle with my size, but I think it's about it's 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 probably bigger size is a is a A5, but you probably find that it's half a A5, um, which we know uh, A5 is half of a A4 page. Okay, for those who don't know. And I always struggle to remember um, what the sizes are as well. So it's it's basically um, it's it's a very interesting tool to use. Um, and obviously, um, if you go to um, um, exhibitions, for instance, um, as a, it, often on the on the tables of the exhibitors, they have little information um, um, instead of information brochures. They've got a little postcard that you can just write your detail on, put in the box, and then they'll send you the necessary information as as a follow up. Um, it's just a different way of written communication. Emails we are very familiar with. There are some of, number of rules that we often break with emails, um, but we need to make sure, and I hate it if the email is more than two sentences. The example I've got on, this, on the screen there, that's sufficient. If, if it comes from, if, if um, I'd much rather have one sentence that says, hi, this is me, and this is what um, this is about, um, please look at the attachment. I'd much rather do that than actually embroiled in the in the text of the um, of the email what everything is about. So make the message very clear. The customer, I know, especially businesses. Um, and you're not going to send the email to um, to, um, to all your customers. You're going to send the email to specifically business customers, um, organizational buyers, um, and uh, they get a lot of um, emails every day. I know. I mean, the other day I was just off for a day. Um, and I've had 64 emails to attend to, and uh, I, I, you know what? That's 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 a very small percentage to what a lot of um, people in in very important positions get um, on a daily basis. So therefore, make it um, make it stand out, um, but make sure that the message is clear. Always check the information as well. Yes, very often um, people type. And they send, and they forget to check and see if the, if um, if a the grammar is correct, and then um, also do a spell check. That's also very important because that just adds to the professionalism in of um, of the of the whole um, um, activity. Proposals is also sort of it could be in the form of um, um, attached um, attachment to an email, but it could also be a, um, a specific letter in itself. Um, very few. Um, Businesses use the, the formal letter that actually is mailed to the customer nowadays. Um, most of it is sent in, in the form of a PDF um, attached to, uh, to an email. But this is basically um, 
to when you're a new business and you are, want to inform um, potential customers um, that you are also now offering certain products. Um, and also very important, um, it, it, it opens the door for them to reply and um, provide information about them that is necessary for you. In preparing a, pro a proposal um, document like this, make sure that you gather sufficient information about the client. Um, you don't want to send a proposal to a client that's um, probably not going to be interested in your product because it's in the, it's in the concrete wrong industry. Okay, when you do the proposal um, document, um, I'm going to call it a letter uh, because it's probably going to be a PDF attachment to an email. Um, make sure that, um, hi Brody, welcome. Um, make sure that um, you highlight the benefits to the client. That's all. That's all, that's all you're trying to do. You're trying to, um, you're, you're trying to, um, to sell an appointment so you can do a proper presentation to them. Okay. Right, um, then we have, um, and this will probably take the rest of, um, of today's session and finish uh, chapter three, is the um, different communication styles. There's, there's four communication styles that have been identified as, that's, as, as most commonly used. Um, the importance um, of the communication styles or being able to identify and differentiate between the different styles is because no success in um, effective communication is to ensure that you use the correct method um, or correct style of communication for a particular customer. Okay, the four that we've identified, emotive, directive, reflective and supportive um, communication styles. We'll um, have a look at um, individually, we'll have a look at what it, um, basically what sort of characteristics each of those four represent, what sort of cues there is um, um, to the salesperson that it um, requires um, a particular one of these four and then what you can do when you are selling to a to a emotive um, um, to, a, to a customer who, um, who can be categorized as an emotive communicator or a directive communicator or a reflective communicator or a supportive communicator okay so that's the trend of the next couple of slides. If we start with the emotive communicator, it's usually a very sociable, I'm not say heart of the party, dance on top of the table type of person, but it's, a, it's pretty much an extrovert. Uh, somebody who's very confident, somebody is very sociable, um, energetic, enthusiastic. Um, they have opinions about everything and they are not scared to speak their minds. They use a lot of hand gestures in, in their communication. They talk fast and they, they almost as if they on 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 on, on um, some kind of um, high caffeine diet uh, or substance. Um, it's it's like the energizer bunny. Those type of people. They are emotive communicators. Um, the signs that you that you as a, as a salesperson can um, can look for to determine if it's an emotive communicator is that this person always seems busy. He's always rushing somewhere and always doing something and um, quick, quick, quick um, communication. Um, very relaxed, however, when they communicate. Um, and they are easy to communicate with because um, that's the kind of individual that almost will be able to, 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 to start a conversation with anybody um, because they communicate very easily and they because they are confident um, and um, they are almost on a permanent high um, and therefore they, they need information quickly, uh, they make decisions quickly as well. Okay, so when you're selling to um, um, an emotive communicator, you will have to keep them interested because it's, it's almost like somebody on, uh, who has ADD and hasn't taken their medication, they, they hyper, they, they make decisions quickly and then you need to keep them interested, otherwise um, if you're just going to bore them and, and, and do a normal sales pitch, um, you're probably going to lose them or, or, or they're not probably not going to be interested. It is important, however, that you spend time to build um, a relationship with these individuals. Because they're so rushed, um, do not try and, and rush them into a sale. It is important that in, 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 um, in any form of communication that you rather 
um, have five, six conversations with these individuals because you can be short and fast and hype paced um, that you share bits of information and build a, um, a, a relationship with them over a number of, um, of, um, of communications. Um, listen to what they say um, and make sure that when you eventually um, have, um, when you have eventually um, been able to establish a relationship and you're getting to the point where you can make a sale that um, um, not make a sale but um, actually do a presentation to them that um, that you have gathered all the information because that final presentation is not going to be a repeat of what you've done already it's going to be a quick summary of what um, has been discussed up to that point purely because of the nature of uh, the emotive nature of um, of this type of communicator the second group or second um, uh, style of communication is the directive style. Now, these people, we find um, sort of a mix between uh, um, a, um, a low sociable individual, but um, very high, um, um, highly dominant in, in, in situations. Um, they are very much on top of things. They often in managerial and director positions in hence the name directive communicator in um, the environment where, where they are, their businesses or um, in their lives, for instance. Um, they um, uh, will carefully consider all the information that you provide them. They are not going to make quick decisions. Um, so you have to uh, ensure that you provide them with the correct information and all the detail, otherwise um, it's going to be a lengthy process. They um, um, want to do most of the talking, therefore you have to just keep on responding to their um, questions and their uh, requests and provide them with information. Let them lead. They will want to direct um, the, 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 um, the conversation. Okay. For um, you as a salesperson, the verbal and non-verbal cues that you can be looking for to see if a customer is a directive communicator is that um, they, again, because of most often the position that they have and, and in their careers uh, seem very busy and do not have time to waste and therefore do not waste their time. They prefer to do the talking, allow them to do the talking. They want to be in control of the situation, guide them. Don't fight them, don't argue with them, just provide them with information as, uh, and obviously be very well prepared because they are almost going to be asking you the questions, although you are doing the sale. When you sell to these type of people, um, you know that the interactions, the communication is going to be very business-like. You know that you have to be very well prepared. Make sure that you have all the facts, that you communicate all the facts in an organized manner because these people are um, people who are very organized, not necessarily perfectionist, but they, um, they, they, um, they, they get through a lot of, of activities during the day and therefore they want structure in any form of communication and presentations that you prepare for them. Um, they are not as concerned about um, forming a relationship. They want to make the best or get the best deal for um, for that particular transaction. Okay. The reflective communicator um, has a low dominance um, as well as a low social ability, but they are fairly similar to the um, directive. Uh, there are some similarities with the directive communicator. Um, they will also carefully look at all the information. They um, um, want you to be thorough in your presentation um, because they don't like surprises. They don't want um, unexpected, um, they don't feel comfortable in situations where they're not in control. Um, so don't come with, with um, that, those kind of approaches where or a, an approach where you um, are going to say, listen sir, but I haven't told you about that. You haven't heard the best news yet. They don't like these kind of things. So that's that's too much of a surprise element. They don't know what to expect and they almost feel that they've lost control in, in, in that conversation. 
to remember, make a presentation to a reflective um, 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 communicator slowly, but in an orderly fashion. The cues that you could be looking for is that um, um, they are very business-like when they communicate um, and make sure that um, because they um, are, are very formal, um, although not as um, formal as a directive communicator, um, that you limit the social um, conversation um, and get to the point and be and remain business-like. Um, because they are not going to be like the emotive um, communicators, the first um, style that we saw, who is um, very much, uh, um, who are very much extroverts. Okay, uh, when you're selling to um, a reflective communicator, make sure that you take time to go to everything because they are thorough and are only going to make decisions once they're comfortable that they have crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. In other words, if they have not um, received all the information in their opinion um, and they're totally con um, happy with, um, with, with the, the transaction, they are going to continue to request more information. Um, focus on the benefits that they will receive from it. Um, often, these are people in positions that you are going to contact when you are selling um, to a business. There's one more type of communicator that we will um, be looking at, um, and that is the supportive one. That's a person who is low and dominant, high social, highly sociable. Um, they are the kind of people who almost um, they almost have made up their decision that they're going to buy um, before them because they're very thoughtful individuals. They um, they fly below the radar um, and they very much they're not introverts, um, but they're not extroverts either. Very um, um, supportive individuals, very attentive individuals, um, and when you um, when you want to communicate to individuals like this, um, it's helpful to know that um, and that you are, um, or you, it, it'll be, you'll be able to identify them um, um, on characteristics of, of, of being um, appearing very reserved and quiet, which they not really um, are, but um, um, the old the old people, uh, my grand, my grandparents and, and, and my parents would probably say that they are people uh, with good manners. Um, they are good listeners um, and they are very thorough. Um, they will think it through. They're not going to because they um, because they are supportive communicators and, and, um, and not dominant um, personalities um, are going to be walkovers. They um, they're also going to think very um, thoroughly before they make a final decision. So when you do sell to these individuals, make sure that you concentrate on building a relationship, which is extremely important. In most cases, it is when, when you're trying to, uh, or when you are communicating with a potential customer. Um, look specifically for barriers of communication, and we'll look at what can be a barrier to, um, that gets in the way of effective communication um, uh, just now and give them an opportunity to, um, to, 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 to share their um, opinion and their point of view. Um, it's important that they feel that they're involved in the, the whole conversation and that they, especially because they, they don't dominate by nature, but um, they still want to feel that they were part of the whole transaction, and uh, it, it wasn't that that they were just listening and being persuaded, and that based on that they make their decision. They want to feel that they have been part of that whole process too. Um, anybody for those who have joined later on? Anybody? Any questions at this stage? We're dealing specifically with um, 
Uh, let me see, because I've got the transcript open here. I want to just change it so I can see what um, form of communication there is. Nobody else um, communicating in... Um, no wonder it's quite fine. I only now see that, you, um, that your alarm clock didn't go off. Um, you know what? It's all good. Um, at least you made an attempt to get um, get to class, um, and that's great. Um, right, if everybody's good at this stage, let's look at the different barriers of communication or potential barriers of communication. Um, some people don't like the first names are used, um, especially people with titles. <laughs> Interesting, and those people in Centurion, or let me say the the, the Afrikaans. Um, a community in Pretoria and is probably quite known with um, with Rikus de Beer, um, the stand-up comedian slash radio um, um, host, um, interesting individual, and um, and I think he he is in one of his shows he he points out how uh, the challenges of using people's first names and how people react to it, and especially when people. Um, in, in specific professions, um, if uh, um, in, in, in doctors referring to each other as doctor, um, um, up to the point where doctor, are we going to do this day today, doctor? Yes, it's going to be an interesting operation, doctor. And what do you think, doctor? You know what? Some people, especially people with titles, I think, and I'm not bashing any any specific um, profession um, with the example I'm using um, or the examples that I use, but. Um, you don't know that person. You want to conduct and do business with that person. You're not trying to um, um, to 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 um, organize a date. Okay, so keep it professional um, up to the point where that person say, "Man, you know what? Why are we talking about Mister and Sir and what, Madam? Call me. My name is so and so." They must be the people who feel comfortable enough with you to allow them. Uh, will allow you to call them on their first name. And I know very often people, um, salespeople then, um, I know, I'm like that. If somebody says to me, you know what, um, my name is so and so, call me on that name. I, I still I still have trouble to to, to, to change during a um, um, during a conversation to um, to call that person on their name. I'll, I'll still st stick with the title or with the um, with so or the madam that, that I've started off with. Maybe later on, um, as the relationship with the customer has been has been established. But no, don't open with, hi, John, how's it? He's not your buddy. He's a potential customer. If you become buddies later on, it's great. Cultural differences, we've addressed some of it this morning when we looked at handshakes and, 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 um, and certain gestures that, um, that's common to certain cultures. And um, make sure that you... Do proper, uh, sorry, proper um, research prior to meeting with specific customers or picking up the phone and and talking to um, to certain potential customers that you have an understanding of of what um, what the knows and the and the, and the do's and the don'ts um, of a particular culture is um, and and try and avoid that. Um, also, people um, distasteful jokes. Um, talking about politics and religion issues that most people have um, um, strong opinions um, on. Um, don't bring that into the conversation just to make conversation. Um, people um, sometimes um, potential customers lose interest because um, you are using certain technical terms in a conversation that totally confuses them because they are not subject experts. That's why they, uh, it might impress them, but it's also going, but it's actually going to confuse them more than impress them. Um, so it could become a potential barrier um, that um, to communicate effectively. Cell phones off, people. Yeah, we've got that um, vibrate button and it's just, it's amazing how people still, oh, it's, you know, I'm going to go, give and quickly take the score. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm out of here. I don't do business with people like that. Um, and, and it's a form of disrespect. Um, if, if you are busy with a conversation with somebody, you know what? Um, no. 
put it on, especially if you know that um, it's 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 not it's not a personal con um, uh, it's not your buddy that you uh, bumped into on on the street corner. Um, that's totally different. If his wife or girlfriend or child phones them while your guys are talking, that's totally different. Um, but I'm talking about a business situation here and uh, how a salesperson is talking to a potential buyer. Same happens to the potential buyer as well. This can be um, can slightly be excused because um, they didn't know that you were going to call, and obviously. But on the other hand, um, I also I know I'm, I'm in the habit immediately if I um, if I if five minutes before my class starts, I put my phone on silent, boom, or on vibrate, so I know it's not going to ring during the during the session. Um, I immediately switch it on, so it, it's it, it's become part of a routine, and, and that's 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 also required, and, and that it just um, shows that you are um, professional as a salesperson. Your dress code, with a dre um, dress code, and your appearance, are you shaven? Um, do you have a um, a nose ring or a tattoo on, on your forehead, kind of thing? Uh, whatever. I mean, uh, your appearance, um, right from um, clean shoes up to how you've groomed yourself um, um, and how you've dressed yourself for, um, for the occasion is, is also um, very important because that is going to be the first impression. Okay, the person might not see what car you drive and get out of before you meet, um, therefore you, the person who's going to be at the other end of screen if it's an online session or in person um, when you meet very very important okay personal hygiene also very important I don't I think we've all learned a great deal about personal hygiene in um, the last year or so I think we merits got to the situation where we are because of that Keep the customer, keep to the customer's values. Yeah, be respectful um, and and um, towards the customer. If you do not, aren't, then it's definitely going to become a barrier of communication. Right. At this point, um, so I'm going to check and see you what in, is in our meeting chat, uh, Teresa. Um, don't forget about the term test um, change. Can you just in, um, elaborate on that for me, please? Um, so you said that you were going to tell the people who come in the second session about how um, we have the weekend to do the test. As oh, well. yes. Oh, um, no, sorry. You said the term test, uh, the class test you meant. No, no, that, I will definitely do that. Yes, I haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I just got well. Geez, term test. What what changes to the term test? I know this is only in week eight <laughs> that that happened. So, but uh, thanks for reminding. I will definitely. Um, um, I think we almost done with this with this um, presentation, and then I'll use um, in in the wrap up um, to remind everybody about uh, the class test. Class test one that is um, and that you are actually can do already. Um, right, so what we've um, established up to this point is that um, it is very important to be as alert and observant as, um, as, as, as you can, because there's a lot of hidden gestures and, um, um, and mannerisms that, um, that gives away a lot about the customer the um, character uh, and that helps a great deal in communicating with them correctly and asking the right questions. Questions that we can ask and that's going to help us to obtain more information. I'm not going to address every single one of them, but we have on the screen um, um, a, a number of questions. Um, one or two. These are questions that you ask the, um, the potential customer so you can get more information that will help you to formulate your conversation better. Um, ask questions about what they, um, um, what motivate them, uh, what inspires them. Um, um, 
it's it's important that you gather that information and these are just these are general questions i, I have not um, listed specific questions that you have to ask but it's questions regarding a specific um, subject that will help you gather um, sufficient information to to um, assist in summary for this session before i um, talk about the class test um, i'm not sure if this is in your textbooks um, i don't have a textbook with me this morning unfortunately but the five golden rules at, at the conclusion of chapter three um, for effective communication um, not five golden rules and basically six golden rules is that you have to build a rapport and trust with your um, potential customer clarify what the customer wants what's what the need of the customer is present your ideas clearly don't beat about the bush don't give too much information address the concerns that they have when they reply and they have objections make sure that you address that specific concern deliver on a call to action if somebody says you know it's fine then take action um, don't um, um, don't linger on that and be a good listener um, in no particular order um, all of these things are important if you do that collectively um, the chances that you will communicate effectively is great um, or so much greater and that your success as a salesperson is going to increase as well right to finish off the session i think we have reached the end of the session um, important to remember class test class test um, as it says on um, canvas class test one you can write class test one um, or class test one is 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 um, listed for week one uh, week two that we're finishing today and the class test has been available since midnight last night okay um, because it's on chapters one two and three um, and we only just finished with chapter three um, I have opened the class test for you to do the entire today tomorrow Sunday and Monday it closes at midnight Monday evening you do not have to and I don't want you if it's if it's entirely your choice the only reason I will never give you homework to do on the weekend I will never set the tests and exams and submission dates on the weekend but I just thought you know what for some people it is make more convenient depending on the, the accessibility to maybe to um to internet and stuff like that that um sometimes they catch up on work uh, over a weekend that then they can actually do that it's a um 25 mark um multiple choice and true and false um question um, um class test on chapters one two and three you've got half an hour to do it and you can do it anytime from now until uh, midnight on Monday. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Any questions? You all good? Right, people. Um, we've reached the end of another day, another week, or um, and yeah, or next week and say another month as well. Believe it or not, it's almost September. Yes, that's frightening. Um, but thanks for your um, thanks for your time. Um, thanks for those who have joined the session. Um, we will chat again on Monday. Let me just double check and see what the program looks like. I think it's Monday afternoon for an online session. I think Monday we chat to each other again at 20 past one. Um, so. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe, um, and um, we will chat again on Monday afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Keep well.